Hi there, welcome back to my channel. I am Nurse Master Charlie, and on this channel we talk about nursing, health, education, and music. And if you want to know more about nursing, health, education, and music, be sure to subscribe. Today's topic is on diabetes and feet. Uncontrolled blood sugar can cause a lot of damage to the feet, even leading to amputations. So also at the end of this video, I'm going to be showing how to do a foot exam. So stay tuned for that. Got a lot of great information here. So let's get started. Gotta check your feet. Uncontrolled diabetes or uncontrolled blood sugars is the number one reason for foot amputations or even toe amputations. So. A little bit of anatomy, we have about 26 bones in our feet. We have arteries, tendons, ligaments. Um, nerves are one of the main issues. We have a little bit of something called fascia, and we also have some fat. We have two feet with 26 bones with the tendons and ligaments in between. Some nerves, muscle, fascia, and a little bit of fat for some cushioning. Now, so the biggest issue is the nerves. One thing that people don't really understand is that germs love sugar. What? So when we get a little infection, the germs basically eat the sugar that is flowing through the bloodstream and cause a bigger or more larger infection. Whoa. So speaking of germs loving sugar, what does normal blood sugar and high blood sugar look like in the bloodstream? Well, this is kind of mimicking normal blood sugar. In this tube here, we have a red fluid with some little white things inside, kind of mimicking red blood cells. Notice how everything flows really easy. Get a real close up on that, okay? Now, this is mimicking high blood sugar. Notice how everything is running a little bit slower. This is really thick, kind of like syrup. So notice the little blood cells inside are moving a lot slower. So this has really high, high viscosity. So when the heart pumps this through the bloodstream, it's pretty darn easy. The heart doesn't have to work as hard. Everything flows real, real nice. This here, when your heart has to pump this through your bloodstream, well, your heart has to work a lot harder, which is in turn is gonna increase our blood pressure. So of course, the viscosity is not only from the blood sugar, but also from our triglycerides and our cholesterol. This here is kind of mimicking or is an example of what it looks like inside of our arteries or our circulation. And notice this one on this side here, the little red things inside like the red blood cells, they flow nice and easy. If you notice on this side, well, we have a lot of plaque, which is basically a buildup from our sugars, our triglycerides, our cholesterols. And if you notice, notice the little red blood cells. They don't flow as easily. And at some point, as they flow through, we can end up with a clot. So if you notice here, we have a nice big thick clot. What that's gonna do is lead to a heart attack or a stroke or a DVT or a deep vein thrombosis. And that is all because of the high blood sugar. So now if you have this going through your arteries, all this plaque, and you add this syrup in through into the bloodstream, well, you're gonna be more of a risk, risk for having heart attacks, strokes, and, and DVTs. All right, here I have a couple examples of some foot models. So this is kind of a foot here showing a little bit of some cracking in between the toes here. It has a little bit of also some cracks on the heel. Um, it has a little bit of beginning of an ingrown toenail. Maybe it has a little uh, corn growing through here and some redness on the foot here. This is a more extreme example. This foot has, among other things, it has a little bit of fungus in here. It has an ulceration. We have an ingrown toenail. We have something going on here, some type of real bad infection. Um, we have the yellow fungal toenails or onychomycosis. Um, we have some cracking here. We have a lot of redness right here on the foot. So I'm going to show you some different angles. All right. The third one here 
is a really bad looking foot. This, we have some purple color to our foot. This is because of uh, the poor circulation. Remember, if we have a lot of plaque going through our arteries and we have the high blood sugar, well, you're gonna decrease the amount of oxygenation and, and circulation going down to the feet. Here we have some necrosis. Of course, this is basically in, in line probably for an amputation. And on the back here, we have a nice little ulceration. Um, so this is where it can end up. People always ask, do feet really get to look like that? Yes, they do. So we have the normalish foot, the not so normal foot, and then we have this pretty uh, bad foot here. <laughs> All right, so when somebody has diabetes, there's a couple of things that we can do to help prevent um, any type of amputations or increased risk of infections. Number one, we wanna always check our feet, okay? Take a look at your feet every day. Gotta check your feet every day. I like that. The next thing is ingrown toenails or fungal toenails. We can have ingrown toenails, okay? Now, ingrown toenails for the average patient that does not have diabetes will have pain. Um, there is an infection in there, but they don't have the excessive sugar floating through the bloodstream to increase the risk of infection. When the infection becomes worse and starts to look a little more purplish, hopefully it doesn't get to that point, um, that the patient should seek treatment to either have the nail cut, removed, and maybe some antibiotics to help cure the infection. Now, fungus in the nails, or the fancy word is onychomycosis, is basically a type or a form of athlete's foot that has kind of gone into the nails, we'll say. Now, nail fungus, it is curable. The only problem with it, with it, the medication that they give can cause damage to the liver. So usually the treatment for fungal toenails is three months, 90 days, but usually the doctor will test your liver through blood work to see if your levels are normal and then they may agree to start treatment. Um, they'll usually wait 30 days of treatment and then they'll test your uh, liver again, blood wise, and then they'll give you two more months of treatment. However, fungus is very resilient. Our bodies are semi good about fighting viruses. We're semi good about fighting uh, bacteria, but we're not so good about fighting fungus. It is so common, I would, the patients that I see in my clinic are probably, I would say 80% of patients probably have it. So let's say a patient did get this treated. Let's say they started in January, they got treatment January, February, and March. And then by April, May, June, July, August, they have normal nails again. Now the problem with that is, let's say they were to step outside um, barefoot. They could go to a hotel, um, take a shower in their, the shower there, the bath or whatever. Um, they can step on the grass, they can step on the cement, their own floor, their own carpet. Fungus can crawl right back in and start all over again. Now the, the bad part about fungus in the nails is if we start to get an ingrown toenail from the fungus, take a peek at that. Now you're gonna have a lot of sugar coming through the bloodstream, which is gonna make this even more of a worse infection. And usually what the doctors will do is, of course, they have to dig that out. They usually have to cut the nails. They will sand the nails down, keep them more trim. Uh, the nails are very thick. It's hard to do this at home without causing more pain or more infections. Now, corns and calluses can happen for lots of reasons. Um, calluses can form from basically a lot of pressure areas in the shoes. We can get those in our hands when we do a lot of yard work. Um, swelling of our foot or ankle, that could be something known as Charcot foot. Now what Charcot foot is, it is an extreme form of diabetes of diabetic neuropathy. So here I have an example of a normal foot and of a Charcot foot. A Charcot foot, basically what has happened is you have so much nerve damage that the own weight of the body can cause fractures of the foot bones, uh, which can lead to a big swelling of the foot. Uh, the bad part about it is a lot of times the patients don't even feel it. It looks almost as if the patient twisted their ankle and their foot swells, but of course this is just the trauma from the fractures or from damage inside the foot due to the diabetes 
and the nerve damage that they are they don't know is even going on at the time open sores that are slow to heal for example if you've had a crack in your foot that's been there for three to five to seven days and is showing no improvement you want to talk to your doctor about that um, one thing you want to do on your own is control the blood sugar and of course dry cracks in the skin for example is two different versions or extremes of it is we want to make sure that we're addressing these talk to your doctor about that um, if you're walking around barefoot or in sandals or flip-flops you want to make sure that you're probably wearing socks and shoes and talk to your doctor about maybe getting a topical medication to help treat that a couple of things we want to do is we want to wash our feet daily whether you bathe or not maybe get a little towel or sponge or something but ideally wash your feet every day you want to make sure that you dry really well on top of the feet, dry really well under the feet, and dry really well in between the toes. Now lotion. Lotion can keep the feet hydrated so there's not so many cracks. Lotion, for example, goes on top of the foot, goes on bottom of the foot, but not in between the toes. That's going to increase the moisture and also can lead to fungus between the toes. All right, cutting our toenails. We want to use the regular type of nail clippers. Um, try not to use the pruning shear types that they sell out there, or you can have your doctor or your podiatrist, a foot doctor, cut the toenails for you. They can file them down for you. Um, a lot of times people with diabetes have vision problems. So if they're trying to see their foot, and they miss or they get too close to the skin, they can basically cut their skin, cause a lot of bleeding, which can lead to an infection, especially if they're having a lot of sugar going through their bloodstream. So choosing the right shoes, um, you want, we wanna buy shoes that are supportive, soft, that basically give us a lot of comfort when we're walking, we're standing up on our feet all day long. The other thing is when we buy shoes, we wanna buy shoes in the evening, not so much in the morning. So why? So picture this. If my hand is a foot in the morning and throughout the day, I'm going to exaggerate this, throughout the day our foot stretches, right? Now if you bought a size 8 and you bought a shoe in the morning and it fit perfectly, well by 5 o'clock that evening the shoe can feel really, really tight. So we undo the shoelaces a little bit. But no matter what we do, the next day and the next day, the shoe starts to feel really tight. Well, maybe in that shoe, we needed to buy a size eight and a half, but we bought it in the morning. So it's not gonna change the size of the shoe. But through the day, every day, like I said, our foot is stretching. So next time you buy a shoe, it is better to buy it in the evening versus the morning. Another little hint. Before you put your feet into your shoes, shake them out, make sure there's no rocks, stickers, or insects. Because let's say there is a little spider inside there and it bites you, and then you bring a lot of blood sugar to that area, well, you're gonna get a more and more bigger infection because the bite pierced the skin, caused some issues, and then the sugar is feeding that infection. Because remember I said, germs love sugar. What? Now in diabetes, we recommend that patients get a foot exam yearly. There is a difference between a foot check and a foot exam. A foot check, for example, you go to your doctor and I tell patients, when you go see your doctor, take your shoes off, even though you're not there for anything with your feet. But you should be checking your feet daily. Gotta check your feet every day. Gotta check your feet. Cause it's the only way. When you're checking your feet, maybe you're missing something. So at home, when you're checking your feet, you should try to check the bottom of your feet. If you can't reach or your foot can't turn all the way up because we our flexibility issues, use a mirror. Put the mirror on the floor and look. The problem with that is sometimes our vision isn't all that great. So when you see your doctor, have your doctor just do a foot check, which is you put your foot out there and the doctor just kind of takes a peek and makes sure everything looks good. If there's something, a redness or a crack or something, well, they can bring that to your, your attention if you didn't know about that. Um, the other thing is a foot exam. It's a little different than a foot check. A foot exam basically consists of a couple of things. It's gonna be a pulse check. It's gonna be a test with a monofilament. And it could be maybe just touching the toes 
It can also be, or use a tuning fork to check vibration. So, first thing we wanna do is, is we wanna basically check the pulses. You have the dorsalis pedis pulse, which runs the top, on top of the foot here. Then you have your posterior tibialis, which runs kind of on the inside, under the inside bone here. Uh, so that's where we're gonna test pulses or check our pulses there. A monofilament is basically a little piece, this is wire, some people use metal, and it's really soft. We tell patients, let me show you on my hand, let me show you on your hand. And then what we do is we touch the top of the foot Aye. here with it, we touch the toes, the top of the foot here, the middle part of the foot, and the heel. So we're basically checking for sensation. The difficulty with this, if somebody has really thick calluses, they're not gonna feel the sensation of the, the poking with this. So it is best to avoid the callus areas. The last thing is going to be using a tuning fork. Okay, a tuning fork is gonna check vibration sensation. So basically we make it vibrate, we touch the person on the top of the toe here, and then on the top of the foot here. It has been suggested that the tuning fork test or the vibration test is a little bit more of a greater indication of neuropathy in the future for a patient. But regardless of that, this is part of the foot exam test. So if you have diabetes and you've never had a foot exam, you need to ask or suggest or recommend to your doctor to either him do it or her do it themselves or to refer, refer you to a podiatrist and have the podiatrist do that. But your job is to check your feet, basically check your feet on a daily basis. Gotta check your feet every day. Gotta check your feet. Just like that. Doing a warm up on toddler feet, uh, just checking in between the toes, checking the skin. Uh, kids are pretty resilient. They usually can tolerate more heat and more cold, and their nerves are working fine. Now, on to the adult. Testing the adult feet the, with the Ipswich test is basically touching the first, the third, and the fifth digit. Uh, the patient has their eyes closed, and they can basically tell you that they can feel that you're touching their feet. Now the directional test, we're going to push their foot or their toe towards them or towards the tester and their eyes are closed and they should be able to tell you forward or backwards. Now the next one here is just a little strength test. They're pushing against your hands and pulling against them. It's kind of checking their overall strength. And then we're doing a capillary refill, checking for a three second, uh, making sure that their capillaries are filling back up. Nail polish makes it a little bit more difficult, so we just kind of test the skin. This is as it is, they pop the teal pulse check right behind the knee, trying to find this pulse and make sure that there is some circulation going through down to the top of the foot, which is the dorsalis pedis pulse, uh, down onto the posterior tibialis is right behind the medial malleolus, and then comparing them together, looking for any discrepancies, then that they are both equal. Checking between the toes for any cuts, uh, fungus, anything that's not quite normal. Uh, checking the skin, the heels, uh, the side of the foot, the uh, top of the foot to make sure you don't have any calluses. Next is the monofilament test. Basically, we're going to demonstrate on our own hand that it is not a needle, it is not painful. And then we will demonstrate it on their hand. And then we will begin the test on their feet. Uh, some people use the top of exactly the top of the foot. Some will use between the first and the second toes. And then test both of the feet. These are the nine areas that we will test. Now there is a loss of protective sensation. It equals no feeling in less than eight sites. And we start with the great toe, move on to the third toe, on to the fifth toe, and then right under the toes, about midfoot, and then onto the heel, and then doing exactly on the other foot. Always trying to keep things bilateral to compare. The patient has three attempts to feel the monofilament, and what we're doing is putting pressure just enough to bend it, and they have three tries to pass the test, we'll say. 
Again, these are the sights. This is the positive and the negative. And on to the tuning fork. The tuning fork is a vibration sensation test. I show the patient on myself, on their selves, so that they know it's not painful. I start by touching the top of the great toe and then to the base of the toes. With this test, as the tuning fork slows down in its vibration, the patient should feel the decrease in sensation also. When it stops is when the patient is to alert the tester that the, the vibration has stopped and that completes the test. The goal is to be completed at the same time. Here the patient is checking their feet, the left foot, then the right foot. If they are unable to bring their foot close, they can use a mirror to check even the bottom of their feet. All right, so thank you for watching. Today we talked about diabetes and feet, how to care for your feet, check your feet, how to basically keep your feet healthy, in addition to talking about a little bit about blood sugar and anatomy and all that good stuff about diabetes and all that goes with it. So on this channel, I do talk about nursing, health, education, and music. So for more uh, videos like this, make sure that you subscribe. And the song that has been playing in the background is called Check Yo Feet, written by yours truly, Nurse Master Charlie. It will shortly be out on iTunes, Spotify, Apple Music, all the music platforms. So keep an ear out for that. Um, again, thank you for watching. God bless. And until the next video, take care and bye bye. Gotta check your feet every day. Gotta check your feet, cause it's the only way. Gotta check your feet every day. Gotta check your feet, cause it's the only way.